This is lecture number two, Fundamental Concepts and Units. Space is associated with the notion of the position of a point P given in terms of the three coordinates measured from a reference point or origin. Time is the definition of an event that requires specification of the time and position at which it occurred. Mass is used to characterize and compare bodies, response to Earth's gravitational attraction and resistance to changes in translational, translational motion. Force represents the action of one body on another. A force is characterized by its point of application, magnitude, and direction. A force is a vector quantity, and today we'll be discussing vectors as well. In Newtonian me mechanics, space, time, and mass are absolute concepts, independent of each other. So space does not depend on time, time does not depend on space. Mass is independent of time, and time is independent of mass, and so forth. Force, however, is not independent of the other three. The force acting on a body is related to the mass of the body and the variation of its velocity with time. Here, we look at, we see a, uh, a, a, a vector, two vectors, P and Q, um, and a resultant force R that represents the total behavior of these two vectors P and Q acting on A. The fundamental principles of um, mechanics uh, lays down on three fundamental Newton's law. And this serves more of a um, review. In Newton's first law, if the resultant force on a particle is zero, the particle will remain at rest or continue to move in a straight line. Newton's second law says that a particle will have an acceleration proportional to a non-zero resultant applied force, F equals ma. In other words, this force is, is going to have an acceleration as proportional to a non-zero resultant applied force. Newton's third law states that the force of an action of action and reaction between two particles have the same magnitude and line of action with opposite sense. And so, and then we have the Newton's law of gravitation. Two particles are attracted with equal and opposite forces according to the formulas below. F is a force and you have G, the, the gravitational loads. M is the mass of the bigger mass, small m is the mass of the smaller mass, and r is the distance between the masses. And a weight here is m equals, w equals mg, mass times acceleration. As you can see here, we have the parallelogram law, which is that uh, the, the, the vector p can be translated to where the dashed line is, and the q vector can be translated with a q um, where the dashed lines are at the top. Uh, so I'm looking at the picture on the left, uh, and you can see there, they can now draw a resultant that connects point A to the other opposite corner, and this resultant R uh, is the resultant that describes these two forces as a single vector the effect of these two forces in a global sense. We also have the principle of transmissibility, which is that a force acting along a line, and you can see the dashed line there, that that force can be moved along that line without really changing the physics um, at all. And so that, that th this is a very important principle that can be used uh, in, in, in that sense, a vector can be moved along that line, uh, and but you're not really changing the physics. We also have uh, a, so a very important consideration, which is units. You have the kinetic units, which are related to length, time, mass, and force. Uh, you also have that these th there's there's the three of the kinetic units are referred to as basic units. It may be defined arbitrarily. Um, the units are really invention of humankind to be able to to describe measurements and, and to describe 
size and, and how much we mean when we say one inch and so forth. Um, and so therefore, uh, three of these are basic units. The fourth unit is a derived unit. Uh, it must have a definition compatible with Newton's second law. So here, force equals ma, and, and in this case, uh, you will have a derived unit uh, that, that depends, that is compatible with the Newton's second law. So you have two, two systems that are used. Uh, one is the international system of units. Uh, this system is the SI system. The basic units are length, time, and mass, which are arbitrarily defined, as I discussed earlier. And these definitions is, uh, for example, length is meter, time is second, and kilogram is uh, kg. And these, these three units are your fundamental units. The force is a derived unit in this case, so force equals ma. So here the mass is one kilogram, and the acceleration is one meter per second square. So force is one newton. That's how the force is is defined, is derived from. Uh, so again, one newton is one kilogram times one times mass uh, meters per second squared. You also have the U.S. customary unit. This unit is used quite a bit. Uh, the basic units are length, time, and force in this case, which are arbitrarily def defined. And you have foot, which is length, second, which is time, and pound force, which is force. The mass in this case is the derived unit. So mass equals F divided by A, and that comes from F equals MA by solving for M. And so when you solve for M, you get one pound divided by one foot per second squared there's a, a, a the second is missing a square there and we define that as, as one slug and that's your derived unit here you can see that one pound equals one slug times one foot squared in this example There's some prefixes that are important uh, for our expertise. Um, I'll let you memorize them. Um, they're in your book as well. Um, Terra is 10 to the 12. Giga is 10 to the 9. You're going to use Mega 10 to the 6. Kilo is 10 to the 3. And, and so forth. So I invite you to kind of memorize the symbol and the prefixes that go along with them. We also have a standard units in the SI system uh, for different various quantities, acceleration, angle, angular acceleration, area, density, energy, force, frequency, uh, for example, frequency is hertz. So I invite you to again kind of memorize uh, and start getting familiar with the quantity. And I think it's very important to really understand what each of these mean. Uh, angle is radian and provides you the angle between two lines are connected. Uh, and and so, so again, uh, you should go through each of these and kind of understand the definition. Uh, but the units, uh, the important thing that I'm trying to point out with this chart is uh, that the units are provided in the very last column. And the symbol is in the second to last column. And so uh, you will have to go through these and kind of get familiar because these are used extensively during unit conversions and, and during various analyses that had to be for, performed for mechanics. You can also convert the U.S. customer unit to the SI equivalent. And here is a conversion factor. Now there's a lot of tools online uh, and even Google which can perform these conversions for you in addition to your calculator. But it's good to know some of these conversions by hand as they can prove very useful during analysis and design. I, I would like to warn everybody that uh, units um, can be uh, improperly used. And when they're improperly used, it can cause a number of failures. And as an example, there's a $125 million Mars climate orbiter, um, climate orbiter that went off course because the primary contractor for this uh, orbiter uh, failed to use uh, units were consistent. This is not just this program, this is observed very frequently and I invite you to always make sanity checks, always check your answers to make sense that 
of the results and to make sure you're not making um, errors that could be uh, catastrophic uh, to the part you're working on. Here's an example, number one, is to convert two kilometers per hour to meters per second. And the question that we're going to be asking also is how many feet per second that is. So the first step is to really understand what I'm trying to convert. So I'm trying to convert two kilometers to hours. Sorry, two kilometers per hour to meters per second. So first step is to understand how many kilometers I have, uh, like how, how kilometer relates to meter, and how hours relates to second. If I can determine that, then I can do a conversion. Since one kilometer is 1,000 meters, and one hour is 3,600 seconds, I can use those conversion factors and then, and then work the math. For example, two kilometers per hour uh, equals to two kilometers per hour, and I'll multiply by conversion factor. So at the top, I have 1,000 meter. At the bottom, I have one kilometer. I put it in that order because kilometer will cancel in that manner. Now I have to work the time. The time is one uh, hour is 3,000 seconds, and you can see that here. Uh, one hour is 3,600 seconds, and in this scenario, uh, I'm now able to cancel the hour, and now I can basically perform the rest of operation, multiply all, and I'll get that this is equal to 0.556 meters per second. So fairly simple approach. Uh, and now my next step is to see how 0.556 meters per second can be uh, converted to feet per second. In this case, uh, I will have to look at the conversion factor. Again, I have to see how meters is related to one feet. And you can, you can determine that from a table like this. And, and you can see for one length, uh, for one feet, you can determine um, how many meters you have. Um, and that, that's not very difficult to do. Um, but once you do that from that table, you, you know one feet is equal to 0 0.3048 meters. So therefore, 0 0.556 meters per second is equal to 0 0.556 meters divided by seconds. I'll convert meters first. And so then I put 0 0.3048 meters at the bottom, one feet at the top, so that the meters cancels out. And then I'm left with 1.82 feet per second. Remember to always round off the final to the number significant significant figures are um, you know correct for your application. Um, so now I'll now convert the quantities um, in this second example: 300 pound time second and 52 slug per feet cubed to the appropriate SI units. Remember, these are U.S. customer units, customary units. So to convert it, I want to first understand what is the right unit in SI. The right unit in SI for pound is Newton. And so I, all I need to really convert then is one pound to Newton. And so here I have one pound equals 4.448 Newton, and you can find that from tables like this, as an example. And once you have that, and you can see that in one of these rows, that force that one pound is 4.448 Newton, okay? Then you can now work it out, and you have uh, that 300 pound time second, times 4.448 Newton divided by one pound, put the one pound at the bottom so the pound cancels out, and then you're able to now write it, um, multiply everything out, and you get 1,334.5 Newton times seconds. And the 1,334 Newton can be changed to kilonewtons using the prefixes that we have previously discussed in this chart. And you can see here 1,000, 10 to the 3 is kilo, kilonewtons. We can also look at how to change, how to convert 52 slugs feet cubed per feet cubed to the SI units. And so now I have to, my first step is to see how I can change one slug to the appropriate unit in the SI unit. So again, I have to go back to this table and find one slug. 
and one slug can then be used to change it to the SI equivalent. Slug is unit of mass. So one slug is 14.59 kilograms, kilograms. So I have to go here and use that information. One feet using the same table is 0 0.3048 meters. I will now convert slug first. So I have 52 slug divided by feet cubed times 14.59 kilograms divided by one slug. And my next step now is to convert feet cubed. I know that one feet is 0 0.3048, so I put it in the denominator so, so that, and then I have to cube that so that the feet cube cancels out the feet, feet cube at the bottom. And you can see that right here. Feet cube there and feet cube here. I have to cancel that out. And if I'm able to do that, then I can now proceed with the multiplication of everything. And at the end, I get 26.8, 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cube. And that turns out to be 26.8 megagrams uh, divided by meter cubed. So that's how you go about that uh, example. I have another example here, example three, which is to evaluate each of the following uh, and express them in the SI units, having an appropriate prefix. Um, uh, this example is also uh, from the book. Uh, I, th I think we can follow the same operations we, we discussed earlier. Uh, so I will skip this example, as you can, you can kind of look at that. It's, it's the same process uh, over and over and over.